Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Rosalind Yukich, and I am so glad that you're with me today. Um, if this is your first time here, um, I just want to welcome you to my channel. I do all kinds of different uh, types of content, cleaning inspiration, homeschooling, keto, Bible journaling, just, you know, all kinds of things that pertain to my life. If you are a regular listener, I am just so glad that you're here with me supporting this channel. So today, let's talk about the one word for the year. I don't know if you do this or not. I've done this for several years. And um, I've always really enjoyed as I'm moving, you know, into fall and into winter, you know, start thinking about, you know, what could my word for next the next year be? I sort of think about the word that I chose for, for this year and just sort of kind of, I don't know, do a little check in, make sure you know, where I'm, where I'm at with that and everything. But today I want to talk to you about what if you totally missed the mark on choosing your word of the year? I don't feel like people really talk about this. Um, you know, and especially in Christian circles, because, you know, we typically pray over our word. We ask God to give us that word, to give us, you know, sort of direction for the next year. And, you know, so I guess like <laughs> if we're approaching it from that perspective and we're like, I feel like God gave me this word. I feel like he really gave me some direction. And we get halfway through the year or into the fall and we're like, mm, I not really sure that that was that. Then what does that say? You know, did we not hear God good? Did God tell us the wrong thing? You know, what's up with that? So I'm talking about this today because that is exactly where I am at. Um, I usually go into like a sort of image program and I usually put, you know, uh, my, my word in like big font letters and then all around it, I'll put stuff like, you know, either books that I want to read that pertain to that, you know, or areas of my life that I want to change or places, you know, things that I want to do better in that area. And so, um, and, and I, and I print it out and then I put it on my bulletin board above my desk. Can I tell you something? A few weeks ago, I took my word down and I threw it in the garbage. I did. And here's why. Um, so my word for this year was life and all around it. Um, I put things in my life that I wanted to um, either where I wanted to improve my health, you know, a weight loss was definitely on there. Um, you know, uh, things in my life that I felt were really out of balance and that I wanted to sort of bring back into balance. I was, and I've been really focusing on that this year of bringing those, you know, like um, appetites under control. And I'm not just talking about food appetite, but I'm talking like media appetite, you know, getting my, my uh, work versus school versus family time balanced better. And so that's really what that was about. Um, as well as, um, you know, with the weight loss, also improving some of my uh, symptoms from my chronic illnesses and things like that. So that was really what I was focusing on. And um, it became super toxic, let me tell you, because, um, and it's a two-pronged thing, and, I'm, and I want to talk about this because I'm also writing a Bible study about this, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. So here's why it became really toxic. Because um, a lot of these areas were really, really difficult for me to, you know, get in line. First of all, you know, healing your chronic illness, that's not easy. It is two steps forward, one step back all the time. Sometimes it's two steps forward and three steps back if you have, you know, a a flare up or if you get sick and, um, you know, in my case, getting sick and healing from like viruses and things is incredibly difficult. It's not really something that I can kind of muscle my way through, um, because it's not all dependent upon me. The family versus work versus homeschool, you know, that balance, it's not, I almost think that it's, uh, unreasonable to think that we can balance that. I don't think it's even about balance. I think it's about discerning 
what is the most important thing that needs to happen today. Sometimes what is most important is, um, you know, doing a little extra school. Maybe it's um, adding in a couple of subjects that your kids really, really like or a huge project that takes a lot longer, but that's enjoyable and it's super learning and, um, and your kids benefit a lot from it, which means that the other areas, you know, the non-school family time and maybe even the work needs to sort of go on the back burner and you kind of need to rearrange the rest of your week to accommodate for that. Sometimes it's something that comes up with the work you know, a client calls up and they have an emergency thing that they need done, you know, or a deadline is coming up faster than you anticipated, you know, whatever. And so the other things kind of need to go in second place to make sure that that gets done. Um, sometimes it's a family thing and it's, you know, your husband got unexpected vacation time or got the weekend off or, you know, whatever. And you're just like, you know, these other things are really great. They're really important, but they need to go in second place so we can have some good quality family time for us. I know in my family, that's always so important. My husband works long hours, um, doesn't get regular days off not unusual for him to work seven, 10, even 12, 13 days in a row without a day off. So when he gets days off, we really take advantage of that. And a lot of times everything else gets shoved to the side so we can have that quality family time. So learning to discern, <clears throat> learning to discern what needs to come to the forefront, what needs to fall into second place, is more important, I think, than balance. Because I think having that expectation of balance can create this anxiety and this condemnation when it doesn't always work out so well. Boy, do I know about that. <laughs> Boy, do I know about that. So um, it became super toxic for me. The weight loss really became toxic and really led to some um, unhealthy body image issues in a way that I've never dealt with them before. Looking at here at my bulletin board, seeing that every single day was so poisonous to my, um, to my thinking, my self-talk that, um, it was, it was bad. And, um, because really weight loss for me isn't even about, um, it's not, it's not even that it's, that it's not easy. It's that man, battling for every single ounce is hard because, you know, with my hormone imbalances and my chronic illnesses and, you know, things like that, weight loss is particularly difficult. And so I realized, you know, something, my word of the year, the, the word life maybe wasn't bad. It was what, it was what surrounded that. It was those things that I, um, the expectations that I placed upon myself for the year 2021 were not life-giving and they were not accomplishing that word. And so, um, I ripped it down and I threw it in the garbage and I said, I'm not even thinking about my word for the year this year. Uh, 2021 was a complete and utter missing the mark. <laughs> I mean, I was so off it would have been like if I had stu stuck a target up here and I got a dart and I blindfolded myself and I twirled myself around 10 times one way, twirled myself around the other direction 10 times and then was like, hit the mark. That was about as bad as I missed it. I mean, like, I don't think that you could miss it as badly as I missed it this year. So the question is, did I miss here God? Did God not speak the right thing to me? Well, we already know that that's not, that's not the case. Did I miss God? I don't know. I mean, to be really honest, I'm not wasting my time contemplating, you know, why did I miss 2021? I do think that one big thing is that um, I was really struggling in 2020 with these all of these same things. I was really struggling with getting those things under control. Um, I had huge flare-ups with my chronic illness in ways that I've never had before in 2020 that really just threw me. Um, I gained a lot of weight in 2020, I think, with most of the world's population. 
Um, and um, there was just a lot there that I think sort of led to that decision. Um, and so I think, so it, so this is what it became. It was like, I'm going to muscle through this. I'm going to do this thing. And I really felt God speak to me a couple of weeks ago saying that was the problem. You know, the reason why I couldn't seem to get on top of those, um, areas that were surrounding that word life was because it wasn't about me leaning on the grace of God saying, you know what, um, let's, you know, let's take, first of all, things one at a time. And it's not about me muscling through it. It's about learning what does God want to teach me through this? It was about, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to heal my chronic illness. I'm going to get these things under control. I'm going to balance my life so that when I go to bed every night, I feel so good about myself because it all worked out so perfectly. It was about that. Like, you know, the whole, it sort of, I don't know, sort of reminds me of like those, those, um, you know, motivational speakers that are like boss, babe, you can do this. You can, you can balance it all. You can have it all. You can do it all and go to bed at night and you can pat yourself on the back because you are so successful. You are so awesome. You are. And no, I went to bed every night feeling like a total failure because I literally could not get myself on top of it. And it was then that I realized that God doesn't expect me to get on top of it. He doesn't. It's not about being on top of it. It's really about, um, first of all, the word of the year is not about ending your year going, I did it. I'm on top of it. The word of the year is about, um, it's about personal growth, right? It's about looking at that going, okay, where are the areas where I need to grow? How am I going to grow? It's not up to me to grow like a plant. If you plant I just actually yesterday planted um, two shoots that my mother-in-law gave me. Um, they're like um, herbs, herbs, and um, I just planted them outside. So first of all, they didn't plant themselves. <laughs> Second of all, they are not going to water themselves. Thirdly, uh, they can't sun themselves because they have zero ability to do that. They rely on the sun to help them to grow. Um, they, you know, they don't get the nutrients within themselves. They have to get that from the ground. Um, so it has nothing to do with them. Growth has nothing to do with us. Anything that we do for personal growth has nothing to do with us. It has zero, zero to do with us. If we read a book that gives us great insight and helps us to grow. That didn't have to do with us. That had to do with the person who wrote that book. When we read the Bible and we discover those verses and it enlightens us and it opens up whole new revelations to us about God's grace and about his mercy and about our uh, responsibility to be obedient to him and our, our ability to be faithful to him because of that grace that he gives to us are the, ne the necessity for us to live righteous and holy and um, in alignment with his word and how that helps us to grow and how it helps us to become more like Christ. That has zero, zero to do with us and has everything to do with God. Because we obviously can't do any of that on our own. Our righteousness doesn't come from us. It comes from God. Our ability to be obedient to him and re remain faithful to him doesn't come from us. The ability comes from God's grace that is poured out into our lives has zero to do with us. And so um, really what happens is when we place that expectation upon ourselves that we're going to muscle through and we're going to do this and we're going to be on top of it, really what it is, is it that first of all, it stems from pride. Second of all, it places all of the pressure upon us to measure up and we will never measure up. We cannot measure up. It's not possible for us to measure up. We may measure up today, but let me tell you, you know, as well as I do that we may go to bed tonight and we may pat ourselves in the back. We won. We did it. Rah, rah. We're so awesome. You know, and, and tomorrow something is going to happen to upset the apple cart. It may not be even tomorrow. It could be the next day. And let me tell you what, um, if you're like me, it's not just one day that the apple cart gets upset. 
like the apple cart gets upset and we're trying to gather, gather all those apples and get them back in the cart. And that takes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes a whole year and a half because, well, I don't know for me, it's been longer than that. Um, because we just, you know, getting it all together is so hard. Once it gets upset, it's just like we can't get things back in order. And, um, and, that, and that makes us feel like a failure. And the reason is, is because God never designed for us to live like that. He did not design for us to live like that. And so really at the end of the day, I think my biggest mistake in choosing, I don't know if it's the word of the year. It, I think it really is a combination of the word of the year and the things that surrounded the word of the year. The word in itself is not bad but where what it was rooted in was super toxic and the whole and when i began and i began writing a study so i was going to talk about that i announced in august mid-august that i was writing a study on controlling your appetites okay that's scrap that's not happening because i got into that and it it was so laborious to write that i've never I don't want to say never. There are a few times that I have struggled with writing as much as I struggled with writing that. I couldn't get it. It was like, it was like trying to, it was like strapping a locomotive on my back and trying to, you know, climb Mount Everest. It was just so difficult and I was avoiding it and um, it just wasn't coming together. And I, so I was, you know, so I just scrapped it for a while. I was just like, I can't even deal with this. And I was praying and I realized, um, that's not what I'm supposed to write. You know, the, the overall thing that I was wanting to say wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was just it, the, the, I wasn't getting down to the actual root of what I was trying to say. I was dealing with, it was sort of like I was dealing with my dandelion problem by going out and mowing my lawn. Um, and, and we all know that's not effective. <laughs> I mean, if there anything else that makes it worse, right? And really kind of that's what I was doing. I wasn't really dealing with the issue. I was actually making the issue a little bit worse because once again, once again, I was like, let's deal with our appetites. Let's get them under control. We can do this. And I was sort of like sprinkling it with scripture, you know, because, you know, it's a Bible study, right? Um, and it was like, no, 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 I've got this inverted. Not only do I have it inverted, but I'm not even really dealing with it with the right issue. And so I was praying, what is the issue? What is it? You know, what is the problem? And then bam, it hit me. Comparison. That's what the root issue of the whole toxicity of my word of the year and all of the things that I want to do, wanted to do this year to get there. That's what made it bad. That's what made it poisonous. That's what hit me so hard with the body image issues, with the struggle with my chronic illnesses, with all the condemn condemnation that I have dealt with this year, with all of the negative self-talk that I've engaged in this year. It all came down to that. It was comparison. It was like I wasn't doing it as well as everyone else was doing it. I wasn't losing as much weight as everyone else was losing. I wasn't losing it as fast. I wasn't losing it at all. I wasn't healing my chronic illness as fast as other people were. I wasn't balancing my day as, as well as other people were. Other people were doing funner things with their kids than I, were, I was doing with mine. First of all, how do you really know what's going on in somebody else's house if you're not living there, right? So what I was doing is I was taking other people's like um, highlight reel. And I was comparing my whole entire life with that. You can't do that. That is so toxic. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we want to say, well, oh, that, well, then get off of social media it has nothing to do with social media. It has everything to do with this up here and it has everything to do with this in here. It's about, it's about, first of all, controlling your thoughts. And second of all, it's about what you allow in your heart. It's dealing with that. You know, we can all scroll through social media <clears throat> you, know, you have 10 people that scroll, scroll through social media and you'll have 10 different responses to that. You'll have some people that will allow it to get to them and it will allow them, it will, um, they will allow that negative thinking and negative self-talk and comparison and envy and all of that to consume them. 
you'll have other people that are like, you know, well, good for them. I'm glad they're having a great time. And it literally doesn't touch them. You'll have other people that are like, you know, they'll, they'll say, you know, yeah, that's their highlight reel. You know, there's other things that go on in their day. They have real life too. You know, they're, they're looking at it from a completely realistic standpoint. And you'll have other people like me, you know, who can have all of that happening <laughs> at various times in their life and throughout their day. And so, you know, I think we all know social media is not an actual reflection of somebody else's life. Like a picture does not tell you the whole story, you know, and I knew that and I know that, um, but it was still in the deepest parts of me eating me up. And so, um, I don't know if you have dealt with this. I mean, I'm making this video because I think probably people are like, I'm making this video because I know if I'm struggling with it, other people are struggling with it too. I'm not the only one. Like we all know that if we're struggling with something, uh, chances are somebody else in the world, at least one other person on planet earth is struggling with that same thing too. It's why we do what, you know, these videos, right? Because we know that if we share our story, somebody else is going to be, you know, inspired or touched, or it will speak to them in some personal way. And that's why I do what I do. It's why I blog. It's why I do these videos. If you have struggled with this, if you are looking at your word of the year going, yeah, no, no, no. No, that would totally miss the mark. And if you're sort of deep in yourself questioning, you know, did I miss God? Maybe I can't even really hear from God. Maybe that was just me. Maybe I need to even start, stop trying. You know, I'll tell you something. Like literally two days ago, I was thinking to myself, I'm not even going to bother picking a word for 2022 because this was such a total failure, like complete fail that I'm just not even going to try anymore. Um... I lost all motivation to do that. And then I realized it has nothing to do with the word of the year. It just had everything to do with this word this year <laughs> and everything that surrounded that. Um, but it doesn't make the whole concept bad. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it. It doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean anything really. It just meant that, you know, I, I messed it up. Okay, so move on. And, um, it doesn't, but it also doesn't mean that this year has to be a complete fail just because my word of the year was bad. Actually, I will tell you this, and I'm going to end with this to be really, really honest. This year has been amazing. Um, have I balance, have I learned to balance my work, homeschool, family aspect life? No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, and I'm not even going to try to do that. That is impossible. There is too much to do in too few hours in the day for that to ever be possible. Am I doing better at discerning what is more important and throwing that thing in first place? Yes. I'm doing so much better at that this year than I have ever done before. Um, am I doing, have I learned to, you know, control my media and keep it down to, you know, listening only, you know, to podcasts or whatever, one hour a day. That was, that was what my goal was. No. Um, there are some times that I listen to just, a, you know, a podcast just for a few minutes. There are some times that I listen to longer. It's not about being able to say, yay, I kept it to one hour today. That's not what this is about. It's about learning to discern the moment. Um, you know, is this a moment when I can throw my headphones on and listen to something because everyone else is doing their own thing? Yeah. But is this a moment when I need to take them out and I need to give my family my full attention, um, so that they know that, um, mom is here, is present in this moment with them and she's looking them in the eye and she's, you know, giving herself fully to them. Yeah. I've, I've done that. I've learned to do that so much better than I did before. Um, you know, have I lost, have I lost the weight? Have I gotten down to where I wanted to go? Did I meet my goal? No, I'm not anywhere near my goal. Let me tell you. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm circling that same mountain that is on the scale as I have been the past couple of years, still circling that mountain. But have I learned more about myself, about, um, how, um, about what the root of my, 
um, angst is with the scale? Yeah, I have. I have. Is it making it better? I don't know that it's making the weight go away, but it's making how I feel about it so much better. Have I resolved my chronic illness issues? Some of them I have. Um, some of them I, and most of them I haven't, but, um, but it's not about that. It's about, it's about the way that I think about it. It's about my attitude about it. It's, it's about at first of all, learning not to make that my identity, which I've definitely, um, really done well with, um, changing the way I think about it and changing my attitude about when I have a flare up. And also finding the tools that I need in my tool belt to help me get over it. So I've done really, really well with that. And some of the symptoms have gone away. Um, and so that's really great. Um, and so really, it's not about even the self-improvement, like the improvement that is visible that everyone can see. It's not about that. It is about, um, it's about what's happening deep inside. So we all know that a lot of times um, what happens deep inside isn't always visible on top, right? That takes time to rise to the surface. And so has 2021 been a fail? Absolutely not. 2021 has been one of the biggest wins in my life in a long time. I've learned so much more about myself. I've been able to identify areas of weakness in my life that go back decades and have um, begun taking steps to, um, to address those through the power of God's word, through meditation on God's word, through um, you know memorizing scripture, um, and those really important disciplines. And that is huge. That is so, so huge because these, I think making these kinds of steps and addressing things from the depths of, you know, and being able to identify the root of a problem, that is what leads to lasting change. It's not all about changing what is visible because you know, that's like, again, taking that lawnmower and mowing right over our dandelions so nobody sees them. But, you know, in, you know, in another year or so, it's going to be a worse problem than before. So it's not about, you know, changing that. It's not about behavior modification. It's about getting down to the very root of an issue, ripping that out. It's about making those lasting changes that are going to be there for a lifetime. And a lot that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of attention. It takes so much wisdom and discernment. And it really takes the power of the Holy Spirit doing a work deep inside of us. It may not be visible right away, but it will be lasting it is something that will be lasting for a lifetime. It's investing in heavenly treasures. It's um, storing up those treasures in our heavenly bank account. It is what um, it is really what God wants to do in our lives. So, the word life isn't so bad. It's not so bad. It really happened in a way that I didn't expect. It definitely happened in a way that I didn't want, but it was definitely a win. So. If this was you, if you ripped down your word of the year, physically or figuratively, it's okay. If you are really, really tied up in knots about trying to figure out your word of the year for next year and you just can't get there, don't overthink it. If it's a miss, it's a miss. If you get to March and you're just like, that really stinks, pick a new one, it's okay. No one, there's no rule that says that that word has to be picked by January 1. To be really honest, don't overthink it. I've definitely stopped overthinking it. Am I contemplating what my word could be for 2022? Mm, a little bit. Uh, am I going to let it tie me up in knots like I have in the previous years? Absolutely not. Um, am I going to let it come to me? Yeah, I am. Um, am I going to stop putting expectations on myself? Absolutely. That is not going to happen anymore. And if I get to April or May of 2022 and I'm like, eh, nah, 
Am I going to be disappointed about it? Nope. Am I going to possibly pick something else? Maybe. Am, um, am I thinking about a new word for 2021 right now? Nope. <laughs> I'm not even going to go that route. It's almost over and what's happened has happened, but what's happened has been great. So I just wanted to throw that out there for those of you who do the one word a year. So have you ever gone through what I've gone through? Have you ever gotten to, I don't know, mid-year, you know, two-thirds of the way through, three-fourths of the way through, and you're just like, that was not good. Let me know in the comments. How did you respond to that? Did you just try to muscle through it anyway and get to December and just be like, that was a big fail? Um, or did you just scrap it? Did you try to make the best of it anyway? You know, try to just sort of, I don't know, reshape it and you know, make the best of it. What was your response to that? Um, did it kind of disappoint you? Did it sort of throw you off of, you know, not wanting to do that anymore? Um, do you pick a word of the year? Um, and what is your word for 2021? And how are you doing with that? Those are all the questions that I have. So leave me answers in the comments below. And um, if you liked this video, be sure to give that, that thumbs up. That um, lets a YouTube know that you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out. Also, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that above and or actually it's below I don't know where it's at I can't remember um, be sure to also ring the bell for notifications you can find that bell when you go to click on my channel and view all my videos you'll see that little bell icon there be sure to click that because that lets you know anytime a new video goes up I do upload videos um, about three to four times a week and so uh, be sure to do all of the things and I will see you back here in my next video bye